Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Two weeks ago I attended DevCom 2024 in Pisa, an event organized by the Computer Science Department where I had the pleasure to meet Katsuhiko Nishi, the creator of the MSX standard. And for those who don't know, this standard was created in 1983 and it was a groundbreaking project for its time. The idea behind it was to unify the computer industry because it was fragmented into closed and incompatible systems. For example, with the MSX you could use a Sony computer with a Sony printer or a software developed for one system on another without any problems. And that was something that wasn't a given at the time. The MSX standard was born in the 80s in Japan, an era marked by rapid growth in personal technology. Back then, Nishi was vice president of Microsoft Japan and he proposed an approach that could integrate hardware and software into a unified platform. He collaborated with many companies like Sony, Sanyo and Panasonic and other tech giants to develop a standardized specification, making computing more accessible to a broader audience. The first generation of the MSX standard used widely available components such as the Zilog Z80 processor in a Texas Instrument graphic chip that had already been used in some consoles of the time. This combination of elements made the MSX standard a powerful yet affordable system capable of a wide range of applications such as games and word processing. And this success led to a series of updates. The MSX2, introduced in 1985, added features that made it ideal platform for many users. Later, further updates were introduced with the MSX2 Plus and the Turbo R. And despite the competition of some systems like the Commodore 64, the MSX gained a loyal following, especially in Japan, Europe and South America. But the MSX wasn't just a computer, it was a highly versatile and expandable platform that could be adapted to a wide range of needs and applications. During that, Konishi introduced the latest advancement in the MSX standard, the MSX MSX0 and the MSX3 and also had the honor to translate his presentation and interviewing him about the history of the standard and also his vision for its future. So thank you for this interview and I wanted to ask you what inspired the creation of the MSX standard and uh, also what was your main goal? <coughs> uh, that was back in 1981. Yeah. Uh, we did the work for IBM, IBM OS, mm -hmm. IBM Basic. So we know IBM is going to be very big. Mm -hmm. We know IBM is going to be standard. And we know, we knew <coughs> IBM is 16 bit. So what hap we thought about what is going to happen on 8 bit. I felt there is a big business chance for 8-bit. Mm -hmm. Strong 8-bit, not as good as IBM, but uh, anything below IBM, price-wise, if we do something, we think we will win. That's the beginning of MSX. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, from day one, very fast, we decided that we are not going to compete with IBM. Mm -hmm. That was a very wise decision. So we did uh, MSX 1, 2, and Turbo. And 1993, 10 years, 37. 37. Mm, when we did MSX, oh. <coughs> uh, I was 20... Six, wow, so young. <coughs> you are <laughs> more young. <coughs> we, we did, uh, I gave up because I became president of a company called ASCII. <coughs> and I was busy. At that time, I was working from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock midnight. Wow. And I was busy. And uh, not just uh, computer, but publishing, business, software. <coughs> I was busy, so I gave up MSX. But uh, for these first 10 years, I was very happy. But uh, after ASCII gave up, many customers felt it is too bad 
to suspend MSX. So, so many people started activity to talk about MSX, support MSX, right software for MSX. That has been <coughs> a kind of blessing in disguise. Uh, MSX today is the only remaining 8-bit computer. Now going to be 16-bit. Now yeah. going to be 32-bit. I am catching up. So another question is, what were the main technical and market challenges during the development of the MSX at the beginning? <clears throat> the specification was not good enough. So uh, as a software company, what we had to challenge was to make a, a semiconductor. Microsoft has been top software company, uh, knowing nothing about semiconductor. As the vice president of Microsoft, I started making semiconductor. Uh, I partnered with Yamaha, the music company, <coughs> where Yamaha was only making uh, semiconductor for synthesizers and electronic pianos. We told them the next thing you have to do is graphics. So uh, they taught me a lot. That was the biggest challenge was that, and I was 35 or something when I stopped. <clears throat> but uh, just, uh, just a kid, knowing nothing <laughs> yeah. about international businesses. But uh, I was very brave, courageous, crazy. <laughs> enough to go to so many countries. Creative. <clears throat> yeah, I went to China, I went to Russia, I went wow. to Arab, I went to, of course, Italy, Germany, France, Netherlands, Spain, Portuguese, England, Brazil, I Chile. think that your creativity and your originality is, uh, reflects a lot on the MSX yes, yes. standard. <clears throat> uh, I went to almost every every country to me to sell MSX, to find a partner for MSX. That was for me a uh, breakthrough, groundbreaking, not, not great, it, it's a breakthrough experience mm -hmm. yeah. that uh, uh, young Japanese who didn't know the world, now exposed to worldwide businesses. Yeah. And <clears throat> I was, I used to travel without suitcase. Oh, really? I, I was traveling with just a paper bag. <laughs> it's, it's like going to, to Rome. Yeah, <laughs> to have a walk. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> I, I had like a overnight tra trip to London, I mean, crazy trip to, I me mean, I mean, actually the biggest trip I had <clears throat> was uh, for three days around the world really? for announcing MSX. So starting from the Seattle, Washington, where the Microsoft is, and I flew to New York, New York to London, London to <clears throat> Kuwait, Kuwait to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Tokyo, Tokyo back to uh, me, Seattle. Three days. Wow. <laughs> uh, all you eat was airplane food. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, so it, it has been a very good training mm -hmm. for me to be a businessman. Of course. Um, well, another question is, what do you think made the MSX so popular in countries like Brazil and the Netherlands, and why did it fail to achieve success in some other regions? Okay. <clears throat> The uh, success of Holland, Netherlands, of course, the Philips is there. Yeah. Philips was the biggest promoter in Europe mm -hmm. for MSX. <clears throat> the success in Brazil is Brazil had the rule, government regulation, that you can't import computer. You have to manufacture in Brazil. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there has been many countries who partner with Brazilian computer company, they import 
the components and mm -hmm. case even to Brazil. They assembled in Brazil. Yeah. So having a company who assembled <coughs> MSX in Brazil was really the source of serious promotion. Mm -hmm. <coughs> America, I was just scared because there is IBM. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, I don't want to compete IBM because IBM was the largest customer of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And we didn't expect, but we didn't expect, but uh, <coughs> IBM, <coughs> second hand computer, IBM's third hand, fourth hand computer was MSX's biggest competitor. IBM computer at that time was sold at $1,000. Mm -hmm. Second hand is 500. Third hand is 250. Fourth hand is 100. Yeah. I didn't thought about all the computer, resold the computer. <clears throat> so, I mean, am I going to sell MSX against all the IBMs in America where Commodore and uh, Atari <clears throat> is very active in launching the low-end computer? Mm -hmm. I, I said, no, no, we are not going to do America. Yeah, there will be compatible, the mm -hmm. competitors there. Competitor. Yeah. And uh, if there is a chance, 80%, 90% chance to win, you do the war. If the chance is 50-50, no. IBM, <coughs> Commodore, Atari, this active company doing in business in uh, I mean America, mm -hmm. I mean, how come I can be successful in America? So I withdraw. That was my decision. And I was right. Because in <coughs> 10 years, I have, I have withdrawn from MSX new development mm -hmm. and lasted another 10 years. Yes. So, uh, after, right after 2000, I mean, MSX for MSX 20 years, for a period of 20 years, MSX has been very active and we didn't lose money. Mm -hmm. We made money. That was the, the good decision. But uh, <coughs> after 20 years of the vacants, <laughs> I decided to go back to I, me, MSX somewhat, somehow, but uh, we made many, we made, you know, real parent, miss child, when child being sent to foster parent, mm -hmm. in still real parent miss the child. So after 20 <laughs> years, I, I am being a child sick. <laughs> and I, I have to do what I have to do. So I am back with some new creative and original ideas? IoT. <coughs> First IoT. Mm -hmm. No one has been successful for IoT, even, even uh, Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi going after high-end, high-end, high-end. I am, I am laughing. Or oh, they're in the same trap like all other company. <coughs> Where I am doing IoT. The things, what things after IoT is do it yourself, mm -hmm. the self-study. Now I am introducing game into MSX where I didn't touch game at all. So putting other games with yeah. simulator. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then people talk about uh, you are playing with all the technology, you are playing with consumer product. As a computer scientist, computer engineers, I would say, let me challenge state of the art computer science by artificial intelligence. <coughs> My professor at uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, I was, I was, my professor's name was Marvin Minsky. Mm -hmm. He invented artificial intelligence. <coughs> so I'm his student. Plus, I was a visiting professor at uh, MIT, so I'd like to demonstrate to people I can do it. I can do state-of-the-art research and development, especially in artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I am bringing LLM, large language model, which is the center technology of artificial intelligence, 
onto MSX. Mm -hmm. So 10000 $20,000 supercomputer you can buy at your home. That's what I want to make it happen. Is there any uh, strange or funny uh, event that happened during the development of the MSX standard or something uh, that would... Well, <clears throat> uh, nothing funny, mm -hmm. but my biggest sadness is that uh, <clears throat> political maneuver, mm. political maneuver mm -hmm. with Sony and Philips and us, me ask you how we are going to connect CD-ROM to MSX. Sony and Philips invented CD-ROM optical disc and they bring music onto MSX. No, 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 CD-ROM mm -hmm. <coughs> called music CD, CD audio, yes. compact audio. CD, compact disc. Mm. They wanted to interface CD to MSX, but they have, Sony had Sony's agenda. Yeah. Philips has Philips' agenda. So us listening position with two companies, we dispute yeah. a lot. So I, I gave up. No CD with MSX. So there's no MSX and CD product. Mm -hmm. Philips did their own, called CDI, which Sony did their product, PlayStation. Yeah. It's very mixed feeling, mm -hmm. very mixed feeling. <clears throat> Then I proposed the something higher density, and Sony listened my presentation. It was Toshiba mm -hmm. who did the DVD. Sony lost, I lost, Toshiba won. So these, these competition of standardization with optical disc has been my sour memory. Mm -hmm. I am not going to make mistakes again mm -hmm. with MSX3. Uh, were there back then any features or projects that uh, were never completed in the MSX, but that you decided to implement now in the MSX3? Something oh, <coughs> it's a video compression. Yeah. <coughs> uh, H.264. 65, the MPEG video compression mm -hmm. has been the project I was engaged and we did it mm -hmm. but uh, MSX power was not strong enough to run MPEG. Mm -hmm. Now I am going to bring that technology into MSX for the 2K, 4K, 8K video. <clears throat> and also I have been, I for 20 years more, we are doing artificial intelligence under Professor Marvin Minsky of the Media Lab. I have been doing this. Now I am bringing that artificial intelligence in research and development onto MSX with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and find the interview interesting. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record much of the event because I was busy translating or doing presentations, but all the presentations will be available on YouTube very soon, including niches. So let me know in the comments your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to my Patreon page, where I post updates, photos and videos behind the scene. And see ya in the next video.